we've got the pressure, uh, the pitot tube, the velocity pressure pitot tube inserted into the airstream from this air handler coming this way. Uh, we've got uh, 1264, so I'll write down 1264, and we withdraw it. get 975. We withdraw it again. We get 1015 or 1019, I'm sorry, 1019. And then we withdraw it some more. We get a thousand ninety-nine. Right, a thousand ninety-nine. Now we've taken it traversing the duct this way. Uh, now we're going to have to take it traversing the duct this way. So uh, we're going to take a drill and we're going to drill a hole into the duct uh, right about in the center and measure that. So we've drilled the hole very carefully, and now we're going to insert the velocity pressure pitot tube. So it's got these little holes uh, down here to measure the static pressure, and then the tip uh, has a hole there to measure the stagnation pressure. Uh, and we've got our gauge set up, a DG700 set up to measure pressure velocity. And so what it's going to do is it's going to calculate and display uh, the velo it's going to calculate based on the velocity pressure, which is the difference between stagnation pressure and static pressure, and it's going to display the feet per minute over here. So insert into the duct and make sure we keep these tubes attached. Okay. Insert into the duct, and it's reading 891. And then we withdraw it. It's reading 1011. And then we withdraw it some more, and it's reading 1000. 74. And then we withdraw it all the way up, and it's reading 1,119. 1,119. So that's displayed in feet per minute. So I'm going to have to average these readings. Now, the interesting thing about this duct is this duct is not square, it's actually a rectangle and we need to calculate the inside uh, cross-sectional area. So uh, let me turn my gauge off. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the thickness of the duct board by withdrawing the tube all the way up here until the angled bit hits the inside surface of the duct and then pulling it out, and that's gonna tell me that this duct is one inch thick, and so I can subtract the thickness of the uh, one inch from that side, one inch from this side, um, and top and bottom, and uh, get my uh, duct dimensions. So this duct is 13 and a half inches Uh, outside uh, that way and it is 15 and a half inches going the other way and so when I subtract the two inches from each of those sides uh, this is going to give me 11 and a half inch interior um, that way by 13 and a half inches um, inside dimensions.
again, anytime you make a hole uh, in anything, you should seal the hole. And so I'm using uh, foil tape, UL181A uh, P, so that's the uh, ductboard pressure sensitive tape. Wipe that down. It's going to be a little bit wet because I'm sweating like crazy up in this hot Texas attic. Uh, put that there and then uh, take another piece over here and peel it off. stick it on this side. So make a hole, seal the hole. One important thing is never try to do uh, math calculations while you're up in an attic. Record the data that you need to capture and do the math in a more comfortable environment. Uh, you're guaranteed to make mistakes if you do it um, when you're uh, above an 80 degree dew point. It's just something about that that's wrong. So uh, I captured those eight different data points um, of the feet per minute. Um, so we started off with one, whoop, 1,264 plus uh, 975 plus 1,019 1, plus 1,099. And that was when we took the horizontal traverse. And then when we did the vertical traverse, uh, we had 891 plus 1,011, plus 1,074, plus 1,119. Uh, and so that equals 8,452. And then we divide that by eight to get the average. It gives us 1,056.5. So I would write that down, 1,056.5 uh, feet per minute. Um, and then I'm going to store that in memory, and then I'm going to clear. Now I'm going to uh, do the cross-sectional area, because this was a rectangular duct. Uh, the inside dimensions was 11.5 uh, plus, or I'm sorry, times, multiplied, times 13.5. It uh, gives us the cross-sectional area of uh, 155.25 uh, square inches, and there's 144 square inches in a square foot, so we're going to divide that by 144, and that gives us 1.078125 square feet. And then we're going to multiply the cross-sectional area times the uh, velocity that we measured, the feet per minute, 1,056.5, and that's going to give us the volume of 1,139 cubic feet per minute.